Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers bicycle licensing, police confiscations, and arrest authority, and is brought to us by Christian Orozco's channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. Before we dive into the interaction, I want to give a big thanks to the sponsor of this episode, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning. Not only does Skillshare offer its members thousands of unique and thoroughly developed classes, but it also allows members to connect to the support of fellow creatives, and become a part of a community of inspiration and encouragement. Jordi Vanda puts advanced video editing class helped me develop a more efficient workflow in Premiere Pro, and there are a ton of other classes available for every skill level. Skillshare is already the most affordable place to learn valuable skills from home, but right now, the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. You have absolutely nothing to lose, so click on the link in the description to start enhancing your creativity today. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this episode. On April 17, 2021, a large group of teenagers on BMX bikes rode through the city of Perth Amboy, New Jersey. In footage captured by 18-year-old Christian Orozco, the riders can be seen ignoring stoplights, riding on the wrong side of the road, crossing double yellow lines into traffic, and performing wheelies and other tricks while riding on the street. Most of the riders were not wearing helmets. According to a statement issued by Perth Amboy Mayor Helman J. Caba, the police department received multiple calls about a, quote, large group of bicyclists riding on various streets through the city in unsafe and reckless manners, causing motorists to stop or swerve away from the group. Several vehicles from the Perth Amboy police responded to these calls, and after the riders evaded attempts to stop them several times, officers were finally able to detain a small group of the riders. Because you guys take bikes. Right, right. Right, look, you guys are supposed to have licenses and I won't run just stuff. Four right. cops for yeah, bikes? No, yeah, just let them talk, bro. Yeah. Listen, listen, I don't make the rules. Oh, Yo. Guys, we don't make the rules. Nah, shut up, bro. You no more. Can I take a water break? Listen, God, we don't make the rules. <laughs> You guys know when there's like 30 or 40 of you guys together, it creates a problem for the people driving the cars. We want you guys to have fun. We want you guys to ride your bike. Nobody wants to take your bike. It's a beautiful day out. All right? Listen, be careful. We want yeah, you but we get kicked out from every spot we go to. Well, look, when you go... Like the beast, we went there and we got kicked out. Yeah. All right, listen, when you roll, <laughs> when you roll like 40 deep or 30 deep and you guys are in the middle of the streets and causing cars to move, move over from you guys, you know we're gonna come here and talk to you guys, right? I mean, listen, these bikes are not cheap bikes, all right? We want you guys to have fun. You guys should have helmets. You guys are supposed to have. Yeah, I see you do. I'm just saying. You know, you guys to have licenses. So look, I just want to give you guys fair warning. I appreciate you guys stopping, okay? All right. I told Excuse you I promise you're not taking your bikes. Not taking your bikes. But I'm gonna tell you something. You guys gotta be fair warned. You're gonna have to get licenses for your bikes. The officer informs the group of teens that they have to get licenses to continue to ride their bikes in the streets. Under Section 158-1 of the Code of the City of Perth Amboy, quote, No person shall ride, operate, or propel a bicycle upon any street or other public highway in the city without first obtaining and having secured and attached to such bicycle a proper license tag. For an individual to obtain a bicycle license, Section 158-3 states that they must submit a written application for a license to own and operate a bicycle to the chief of police. If the application is approved, Approved, the chief of police will provide a proper license tag, which must be attached to the frame of the bicycle, quote, in a substantial manner. The city charges an annual license fee of 50 cents per bicycle. In Mr. Orozco's footage, the bikers can be seen violating several other laws pertaining to the operation of bicycles, including Section 14.2 of Chapter 4 of Title 39 of the New Jersey Revised Statutes, which requires that every person riding a bicycle on a roadway rides as near to the right roadside as practicable, and provides that, quote, persons riding bicycles upon a roadway may travel no more than two abreast when traffic is not impeded, but otherwise shall ride in single file except on paths or parts of roadways set aside for the exclusive use of bicycles. Additionally, the riders appear to have violated section 12 of the same chapter, which states that bicyclists should not ride the bicycle with their feet removed from the pedals, or with both hands removed from the handlebars, nor should they practice any trick or fancy riding in a street. Depending on the age of the riders, they
they may have also violated Section 10.1, which requires individuals under 17 years of age to wear a helmet when riding a bike. While it is unclear how much of this behavior the officers observed or was reported in the calls citizens made to the police department, it is likely that the officers had the reasonable suspicion necessary to lawfully stop the teens. Listen, we don't make them laws. The laws are made by the, by the, by the city people. And everyone's supposed to have them. I saw the money by all the years. Don't get on doing that kind of stuff. But guys, please, just be a little safe for your, for your safety, okay? All right. All right. Guys, I appreciate you guys stopping. Thank you very much, okay? This is the last time I'm That's all that? That's how you got to handle business out here. Yes, sir. Yeah, clap it up for him. Yeah. yeah. Oh. He just said no. What you mean? I had to go. What you mean? We wasn't even here. She never told us. She never told us. He got something different off of all y'all. He just said no. Okay. No, I you're not getting my bike. 30 kids earlier okay. today, right. but they were not to be in the middle I of the street. I advise. When was this? I'm on watch. You're not getting my bike. I advise. You ain't putting not $1 in it. And your mom's going to come back and get it. You ain't putting not $1. And your parents will come and you, get it. You see $1? Did you put it all in it? You know what? Did you put it all in Take their bike. After initially claiming their bikes would not be taken, the officers decided to confiscate them. According to Section 158-9 of the Code of the City of Perth Amboy, quote, Any bicycle being operated or propelled in violation of any of the provisions of this chapter, upon the personal observation of a law enforcement officer, is subject to immediate confiscation. A confiscated bicycle shall be returned upon payment of any fine imposed or upon any final adjudication. While not as common for bicycles, police are typically authorized to impound motor vehicles for traffic and parking violations, when vehicles have been abandoned, or if their owner is arrested, and regularly do so. For example, Section 2.4 of Chapter 43 of Title 2C of the New Jersey Revised Statutes identifies various reasons law enforcement are authorized to impound vehicles. Police vehicle impoundment has generally been approved by the courts, and in the 1976 case of South Dakota v. Opperman, the Supreme Court approved of the practice, explaining that, quote, in the interests of public safety, and as part of what the court has called community caretaking functions, automobiles are frequently taken in to police custody. The authority of police to seize and remove from the streets vehicles impeding traffic or threatening public safety and convenience is beyond challenge. Given the history of judicial support given to this type of police seizure, it is probable that a court would conclude that the city's bicycle confiscation statute was permissible. Wait, I'm not even doing anything. That's... Yo, get off. Bro, get off. Get off the bike. Bro, no, I ain't even doing anything. Hold on. No, no, hold on. Wait, wait. Wait, yo, don't... Bro, he said it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, yo, yo, hold up, hold up. Let, let them talk. Let them talk. All right, 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 can you give us a break? Okay, well listen, look, I, 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 I spoke to you guys on how it was. She told me that she was already here. And she, she was, she, I, but I she didn't stop us point. though. She didn't even give us a talk. All right, right you well, just rode, we rode past you. That's how you know you, Catherine. She, I, I didn't even hear, you, you guys know the little. That's how you know that I talked to you, because you rode past me. Nobody heard you. The young man states that no one heard the officer's prior warnings, but she could be heard on a loudspeaker earlier in the video telling the riders that their bikes would be taken if they did not stop. The bikers never gave the officers an opportunity to issue a formal warning due to their evasive maneuvers, and the video clearly shows the bikers committing multiple traffic violations in plain view of the officers. Get off the bike, dude. Wait, wait, let me search us on. Get off right, the bike. Right, let me search us on. Wait, wait. Get off. On. Just take their bike. Yo. We're not, get wait. their name. And, and I told you bike. guys you're supposed to have license. Get off the bike. Listen, if, 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 if the sergeant warned you guys about your bike, you guys are warned. Can I talk to you? I gave you a warning. You're going to get arrested. I just got out of my house. I have a bike. You're pissing me off. I have a bike too. Get off the bike or you're going to get arrested too. I just got out of my house. I have a bike too. Get off the bike or you're going to get arrested too. I get just got off of my. I gotta get off, sir. Okay, well, there's, there's another situation that happened before I before you guys stop. Get from my house. And your man is out of control over there a little bit, and you know you're gonna have to take you know his, his actions into consideration. Bro, because we live where Edison. What the? We live where Edison, cause.
One of the teens initially refuses to allow his bicycle to be confiscated by pulling it back from the officer who was attempting to seize it, and then sitting on the seat for several minutes. But he eventually allows the officer to take it. He is then placed in handcuffs and taken into custody. While it is unclear why he was arrested, or if he has been charged with anything, his attempts to prevent the officer from taking the bike could be considered a violation of Section 1 of Chapter 29 of Title 2C of the New Jersey Revised Statutes, which criminalizes any, quote, attempts to prevent a public service from lawfully performing an official function by means of flight, intimidation, force, violence, or physical interference or obstacle, or by means of any independently unlawful act. Given the potential violations of municipal law and state criminal and motor vehicle laws involved in this encounter, it is likely that the officers were within the scope of their authority to arrest this individual. Section 152 of Chapter 14 of Title 40A of the New Jersey Revised Statutes asserts that, quote, the members and officers of a police department and force within the territorial limits of the municipality shall have all the powers of peace officers, and upon view may apprehend and arrest any disorderly person or any person committing a breach of the peace. And Section 152.1 provides that, quote, any full-time, permanently appointed municipal police officer shall have full power of arrest for any crime committed in said officer's presence. Additionally, Section 25 of Chapter 5 of Title 39 of the New Jersey Revised Statute states that any law enforcement officer may, without a warrant, arrest any person for violating the traffic code. While the encounter arguably could have been resolved more effectively through the issuance of a warning or a citation, the U.S. Supreme Court held in the 2001 case of Atwater versus City of Lago Vista that, quote, if an officer has probable cause to believe that an individual has committed even a very minor criminal offense in his presence, he may, without violating the Fourth Amendment, arrest the offender. Similarly, in the 2002 case of State versus Dangerfield, the Supreme Court of New Jersey refused to place limits on the authority of police officers to arrest for minor offenses that occur in their presence, even though, quote, the modern view favors the issuance of citations and summonses over custodial arrests for minor offenses. With this legal framework in mind, it's highly likely a court would uphold the legal validity of this arrest. I'm six feet. You're not six feet. That's fine. Okay. Only your parents will come get your That's crazy, man. Yo, free him, bro. You got to take my info so I can get my bike. They took your bike? Yeah, they took my bike. What's your name? They took everybody's bike. All right, what's your name? As the officers began to leave, Mr. Orozco requested information on how to get his bike back. An officer took his name and advised him that he could retrieve his bike from the police station on his own since he was 18. The rider who was arrested was released several hours after the incident, and the bikes were returned to the riders. Following the incident, Mr. Orozco posted his footage on Instagram and TikTok, and the video quickly went viral. The incident was met with social media outrage and even drew criticism from Amol Sinna, the executive director of the ACLU New Jersey, on Twitter. In response to the outrage, cry, Middlesex prosecutor Yolanda Ciccone's office released a statement indicating that the situation was under review by the Middlesex County Prosecutor's Office, Perth Amboy Police Chief Roman McKeon, and other law enforcement officials from the city. The Perth Amboy Mayor's Office also stated that they are reviewing the incident. As of the date of this episode, the results of these investigations have not been released, and it is unclear whether any of the riders will be taking legal action. Overall, the Perth Amboy officers get a C+, because although they remained within the bounds of their authority, they maintained a condescending and hostile demeanor throughout the encounter and exercised poor discretion by effectuating an unnecessary arrest on one of the bikers. There is an argument to be made that confiscating the bikes was unnecessary, but it is important to take into account the entire context of this encounter before drawing that conclusion. Regulating the use of bicycles is essential to the public safety of every city, and courts have confirmed that cities are free to regulate the use of any vehicle that is operated upon its roadways. Mr. Orozco has posted several videos to his YouTube account of himself breaking various laws on his bike. And many of his videos focus on his interactions with police officers after doing wheelies through retail stores and shopping centers. So there is equally an argument to be made that taking the bikes was warranted. And this may not have been Mr. Orozco's first encounter with these officers. It is unclear why the officers arrested the gentleman on the red bike, but there are legitimate questions to be raised about the ethicality of the discretion exercised to make that arrest. Although there were clearly violations that the gentleman could have been legitimately charged with, the arrest 
test did not positively contribute to the safety and security of the community in any real way, and making such an unnecessary arrest will only serve to validate this young man's negative perspective on law enforcement. Mr. Orozco and the other bikers get an F for recklessly endangering the lives of others while on the roadway, committing several violations in plain view of police officers, and for maintaining a rude and confrontational attitude throughout the interaction. Judging by the actions captured on this video alone, there is no doubt that police intervention was warranted, and the department likely did receive several calls about the bikers as they claimed. Although the Perth Amboy officers certainly could have handled this situation better, it is difficult to justify any of the actions of the bikers, and the fact that they recorded themselves committing all of these violations and posted it to social media only adds to that difficulty. Ultimately, the attitude and recklessness of the bikers was the catalyst for this interaction unfolding the way that it did, and it will be interesting to see the results of the Middlesex County Prosecutor Office's investigation. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for more police interaction content.